Our next experiment embraces one of the most dangerous forces of nature. Almost four million people have watched red-hot lava meet ice. We caught up with artist Bobby Saki and geologist Jeff Carson and their rumbling lava furnace to ask them what they thought would happen. I had no idea what it was gonna do. No idea at all. The first guess is always it's gonna explode. Right. Always number one. Or it's gonna tunnel down, it's just gonna dig right through the ice, melt a hole in the ice. And of course, it didn't do any of those things. I was stunned by what it did when it hit the ice. And you see the bubbles, you know, bubbles this big, and then there's bubbles within bubbles. The scrambled eggs from hell uh, is the way it looks in that video. It just did things we just didn't really expect. So why are volcanic bubbles formed? The lava is so hot that when it's poured onto the ice, the ice instantly turns not just into water, but straight into steam. Now, this steam has to escape, so it bubbles through the lava. So while it looks like the lava itself is boiling, it's actually the steam being produced that is trying to escape. As the lava cools, we start to get a thick black layer forming on top, and this starts to trap those bubbles of superheated steam inside the rock, and it's kind of like a natural form of glass blowing. But how does the lava crawl across the ice? Shouldn't it melt right through? The formation of all of this steam helps the lava to flow because it means that it's sitting on top of a blanket of steam rather than in contact with the ice itself. And this means the friction between the lava and the ice surface is very low. Now Bob and Jeff are taking things to the next level. It's lava versus water. Wow. We've done over 100 pours into water, onto ice, onto sand, onto snow. We're learning a lot. There are things that are happening here that we had not anticipated. It's beautiful stuff. Stand back. That sputtering lava's over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 